Hello, everybody. Drasco here from 10knorm.com, where my main mission is to normalize six-figure incomes as the minimum wage for heart-centered entrepreneurs. How do I do this? Well, number one, through the 10K Norm coaching program, and number two, through the company and podcast that you're listening to right now. Both are here to help guide heart-centered entrepreneurs unable to hit consistent 10K months despite all the personal development work they've done, master their mind, master their offer, master their sales, and normalize 10K months in six months or less. And today's episode, we have a Real Talk segment where I bring in a heart an entrepreneur on their way towards their own 10K norm. And we have some Real Talk about what's currently their biggest challenge towards their 10K norm. And in that, we're going to explore who they are, why they do what they do. And then live on the call, I get to help them get out of their own way on a challenge that they're currently experiencing towards their 10K norm. And today's guest, we have Vivian Allen, who is a mindset and business performance coach with a mission to inspire and nurture business owners and emerging entrepreneurs to avoid burnout or breakdown by beautifully balancing their passions uh, and profits. Um, And her clients in general are leaders who seek to balance professional and and personal life for optimum health, wealth, and happiness, building a business that they love and supports the lifestyle that they desire. So Vivian, thank you very much for being on. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm great. Thank you, Jessica, so much for this opportunity. It's a real delight to be on this episode with you today. Likewise. Okay. Super happy to have you on, especially that, uh, you know, you're somebody that helps other people dive into their mindsets as well. That's certainly a big part of uh, what I do as well. So I'd love to get a little bit more info about you, you know, who you are, like I said, why you do what you do, how you got into doing what you're doing right now. Break that Mm -hmm. down for us. Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, I I suppose... (laughs) Like a lot of people, my career's taken a few twists and turns along the way. And sometimes when you look at that scattered path, you cannot see the connection. But when I look back over my lifetime, the connection for me was people. I, I'm a people person. Uh, my parents were hoteliers. I grew up around people, serving people. And service has always been at my heart of the center of what I was doing. Um, I did a corporate career for a while. I was in sales. It was great. And then I um, got married and my husband and then and I set up a company together, which was brilliant. And we were living the high life and things were fantastic. Um, the difficulty was that what was passion in our, uh, our relationship turned to pain over time and um, our relationship didn't make it through. So at the end of that, I was pretty much mullered. That's an English expression. That means I was suffering from post-traumatic stress, uh, anxiety, depression. I'd had post-natal depression as well. It took me many years to recover from that deep, dark hole. And I found my passion uh, for help, wanting to help and serve people come through my own healing journey. So I began as a counsellor um, and uh I worked for a long time with um, substance misuse and trying to understand what had gone on in my background. Um, I also worked with uh, young adults at a university for six years, which was, you know, fantastic. But um, what I really was missing was the business element of my life. So I was doing a lot of voluntary work, a lot of unpaid work and I, because it was what I was passionate about, but I wasn't really making any money. So <clears throat> I decided to combine my business skills and having worked in many different environments, set up lots of businesses um, with my counseling. And that's how I got to the coaching elements of the mindset coaching. Cause now I understand, you know, from my own journey of being able to balance what I was passionate about with making money and that's okay. And that's that whole money mindset thing that, you know, I'm really wanting to explore some more with you because although I've made lots of uh, traction in that direction, I'm sure there's still lots to uncover. So awesome. Beautiful. What I mean, not just this like, you know, arc that kind of brought you to, to where you're at, which, which is synonymous, not only with, you know, my own journey, but also a lot of the guests that, that I've had. It's, this tapestry of things that you end up doing that, that make you an expert in, in what you do right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's quite clear in, like, I would say, you know, obviously I don't know you, but like, I can see how good you are doing what you do, because even when it's like, you're telling your story, you're telling it from this level of self-awareness of like, I, I realize all of the pieces that led to X, Y, and Z. And then like, here I am, and this is what I want to explore deeper so kudos to you for for that and 
you know, you had mentioned money mindset. So um, this is, you know, something I know even on your intake form, you, you spoke about these sentiments of like imposter syndrome or not good enough, et cetera. So I, I'd love for you to like dive into, you know, kind of what brings you here today? Like why take on, um, you know, a call like this to, to, to do something like this? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, <laughs> because believe it or not, I am running a money mindset masterclass in January. <laughs> for my clients and I thought oh my god I better clear the decks because otherwise like I say I've gone up several levels from from my lowest point I'm not back anywhere near where I was when I was running the company um, with my husband and I know I've got a chip on my shoulder about that and you know I'm in so many areas of my life I feel totally fulfilled I have lots of joy um, and uh, I've just thought well it's now or never, you've got to put your money where your mouth is, isn't it? I cannot do something that I can't ask my clients to do something I haven't already done. So um, I was, yeah, I think this is a really good moment for me to be exploring this. Got it. So kind of walking your own talk and and that's what I want to be able to do. Yeah. A hundred percent. And that's why I always say like coaches need coaches as well. And I, and I, you know, celebrate you for that because, you know, not everybody shares that sentiment and that's okay. Um, Okay. So then um, why don't you tell me, what I guess block or, or like what is it about the money mindset that you feel like you haven't cleared up? Um, I think the the chippiness is not great. So I don't know if that's a, a an expression you understand, but like just you know, it, in order to be clear to clear the way for for energy to come to you in a clear way it's important to get rid of anything um any negative feelings that you have attached to so when for me is like even if i'm doing better i'm not doing as well as i could have or what i where i was or i'm not doing as well as that person so that comparisonitis So that instantly puts me in a mindset that, you know, I feel like I'm climbing up all the time, which is hard work. Like why energy, you know, money is energy and it likes lightness and fluff around it. And yet I'm bringing with it this heavy like luggage that I'm bringing along about what if or not us, you know, all those comparison type expressions. So that's, uh, you know, that's a real, uh, that's, that's not a great clear energy to bring to, to to money mindset and then I think the other thing I would say is that um actually prior to this was something really freaky has happened this week (laughs) so prior to this week I said I'm not good enough in the last week I've won an award um for my charity work and I've had a not a book I've had a piece published I contributed towards an anthology of uh with other authors um, because I'm in the middle of writing a book and which I don't feel good enough to complete by the way so <laughs> it's not just into money mindset and I made it a contribution 150 authors all these are proper authors like people who get paid for writing books and I got my copy of the book and they've my piece is the first piece in the book and I'm like what no they just done it alphabetically and then it was like no they haven't and I, whoa, okay. So I do know my stuff. I do know my craft. I am good enough. I am being recognized for what I'm good enough. So I, I could say that perhaps the um, imposter syndrome has gone for today. Um, and I, uh, it's a real testimony to like, you know, persisting in a dream and just, yeah, yeah you do, you, sometimes you forget what you're doing it for. I wasn't doing it for an award. But I was doing it for that feeling of knowing that I know. So when you say that the feeling that I know, like well, what feeling are you talking about? It's a real um, centered, it comes from deep within. It's a very calm feeling, like a feeling of contentment. When that sort of monkey brain people might refer to it as is like it's just not there because it's just there's no discussion to be had you know you can't argue with this evidence that's in front of you 
Got it. And that's because of the like the book and, and the award and, and all of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So okay. So there's actually a lot of good things happening uh, in the last little bit. Okay. So which is good. Congratulations. Like those aren't uh, small things by any means. Um, okay. So I'm curious because you started this whole thing off talking about money mindset and then it went into, well, comparison. It went into imposter syndrome. It went into kind of doubt. It went into the good things that are happening. So is this really about money mindset or is it about something else? Uh, I think, uh well i think that if we were I, I i think it's about money because i think that i you know i want to raise my prices in january which um i i'm due to do if that makes sense and i i've got a course out i've got the master class i'm doing all the things but i in order to sell out those products and services i think that I want to clear the channels for, to welcome more money in uh, on a regular basis. Got it. Okay. So if you had to verbalize the problem, what's the problem right now? That I'm not in the same, when I think about like, I'm going to use the word entitlement, which is a bit odd. So I'm wondering why I'm using that, but and because these are externally referenced things. So, but this is where I'm at. So like, I've now seen my name in print in a book. Now I know I'm good enough for a book and I can be that author that I want to be now. Does that make sense? Yeah, and there's a yeah. real tangible feeling to like, oh, there's the proof, I guess. Um, and the same thing with the, with the award for my work with my charity it's like it's an infant mental health charity so it's quite a specialist field um and though I'm, I'm a counselor and psychotherapist I'm an expert by lived experience as well so a lot of what I draw is from my own experience as well as all the reading and stuff I did for all my qualifications but um nothing's well there you go that's it nothing is the same you can read about it like you can know it but till you experience it it's not that, it, you know, that's the, that's the knowing, that's the know I know thing I'm talking about. So elaborate a little bit more on that last piece. So you can know it, but until you experience it, it's not really real. What, what specifically you're talking about? So you can know something intellectually, like I know I need to raise my prices and I know that I still give way more value than the rate I'm charging out at. Um, and, uh, but until I do it and, and people sign up, there's that wobble in between, isn't it? That there's that, that is the wobble. It's like, so the follow through on that. So break it down further. So until people sign mm -hmm. up, then what? Then I won't know that. I am good enough. I mean, like I, I know I am, but I, my head, do you mean the, the doubting part of me will, will chirp up the monkey brain will keep going. Got it. Okay. So it's the validation of the people signing up that tell me that, uh, yeah, this is worth what I think it's worth. Yes. Okay. Got yeah. it. So going back to the original question then, so what, what's the problem you're actually having? Uh, making the sale uh, uh, at the full rate without, like I honestly have to sit on my hands to not go, it's okay, I'll do it for nothing. <laughs> it's okay, I'll do it at half price. Or, it's, I love you so much, I just wanna work with you anyway. <laughs> okay, so one problem is making a sale at the full price, but yeah. then where you just identify with the second bit, the second part of the problem is actually your own self-identity and boundaries because you're the one that decides I'm going to do it at half price. That has nothing to do with the other person. That's your choice. Uh, I agree. Right. <laughs> and then the self-worth piece, if I don't set that boundaries, it's a reflection of my identity that I'm willing to do that. So would you say that that's the second problem? So go and say that a little bit more about that. 
So like number one problem is like, I don't know how to make a sale at the full rate. But then number two, it's I either don't know, am not willing, haven't worked through how to actually change my identity to align with those prices and set the boundaries for them. That's the one. Change my identity to hold the boundary. So, you know, like that before they sign up, does that make sense? So like, ultimately if I'd worked through everything, I would have known my work was good enough and not been surprised that I was on the front page of this book. And I just go, sure I was, because my piece was brilliant, you know, like type thing. And it wasn't that I, yeah. So rather than being externally referenced, I want to be internally referenced to, you know, knowing my identity is, of course, that, that, you know, why wouldn't you? Right. And now, okay, that's reflecting back and I was going to circle back to it, but you did bring it up. So like problem Mm -hmm. number one, right, is like, I who I am is not reflective of like who I know I can be like the, those two right now are aligned or, or not aligned rather, right? Like my identity is somebody who gives 50% discounts, doesn't have boundaries around these things. will do it for cheaper anyway. Right. So there's sentiment basically around the self-worth piece right? Like that, that Mm -hmm. is a problem that Mm -hmm. will seep into whether you sell a course, whether you sell a program, whether you sell your coaching, like whatever it is that you sell, Mm -hmm. it will falter to the level of your identity, right? So that's kind of problem number one. Yes. An offshoot of that is what you just identified, which I agree with you. Even when you look back through this conversation, the only time that I was validated that I could be in a book is when somebody put me in a book and said, you're not worthy to be in a book. Uh-huh. Right. Uh-huh. Whereas the identity, like, it's like, okay, I got lucky. So imposter syndrome is done for the day. Right. And you said that like, okay, now I'm not imposter for today. What's going to happen tomorrow. So we go back to, again, the original problem of, well, my identity does not reflect who it is that I actually want to be. So does that part make sense? Yes, I love that. So uh, my identity must reflect the person. Oh, hey, it's the person I want to be. <laughs> no, surely it's not. Surely it, be, it should reflect the person I am. Like, well, are you that person if you are making the choices that you're making, getting the results that you're getting? Right. Okay. Yes. So the person I want to be. So. Unfortunately, results don't lie. I don't deny or am doubtful of the possibility and the potential and the capability. That part's abundantly clear that that's there. Mm -hmm. But your results would suggest that you're getting exactly who you believe you are. Which I know is tough to to reflect back. And I know it's always funner to be on the opposite end of this, but, uh, you know... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, that's, I mean, uh, like we said at the beginning, I, this is exactly, you know, so valuable, not just to me, but like to your listeners to see this process. So what I wrote down though, which is the bit, this is what stuck <laughs> as I wrote down is, so my identity is a discount. Discounts. Does that feel true for you? Yeah, like, because I discount my abilities all the time. Like, I will flippantly throw out, oh, yeah, and I sailed across the Atlantic when I was 24. Right. So your discounted (laughs) rates, your discounted programs, your unraised rates are a direct reflection of your sense of self, your discounted sense of self. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Because I can't come to you and be like, you know, you're like, oh, you know, uh, it's okay. I'll work with you for 500 bucks. Like, no, no, no. I think you're worth 5,000 and give you Mm 5,000. Right. Like, who am I to determine your worth when you yourself have not taken that decision? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's problem number one. Everything we just, discuss with regards to like your identity your results right now are reflected of your discounted identity problem two is do you know how to step out of that 
Oh, so then what pops in is not without becoming a big head. Sorry, not without becoming a big head. A big head, kind of like like having a big ego. Arrogant, yeah, yeah, yeah. arrogant okay. ego. So like the pendulum will then, you know, you go from low self worth, you get to a point where you're like, okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, you're okay, everyone's okay. But like to get to that next stage of celebrating who I am and doing that without any like I can look at my posture I'm like oh my god like I'm pulling away <laughs> here like oh why would I do that that's just oh my god no that's funny so right so problem number one we said like the discounted identity is driving your decisions mm -hmm. right I asked you okay so then problem number two is do I know how to change it the immediate response was well I can't do that without becoming egotistical so right away it's an indirect way of saying no i can't because you just gave me the reason why you can't actually do it mm -hmm. right so the mm -hmm. secondary aspect of it is well i don't actually know how to step into this version of myself because even when i ask myself the question my brain defaults to giving me a reason of why not to do that so it again reinforces no my discounted self is so rooted in who i am it's going to be very hard to change that uh, and what I'm also hearing myself say is it's not safe. To, you know, and that's a big problem, isn't it? When we're coaching clients, but it's not safe for me to move from where I am it, as uncomfortable as it is. And as frustrated as I am, it's still not safe to move because, and my, the fear being. That's hilarious that I become egotistical. Who is talking in this conversation? But my ego. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, it usually is when you- uh, hilarious. Light so it up, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. My ego and I need to go and have a talk. <laughs> D definitely, uh, you know, so some, some good talking uh, is needed to, in order to, to navigate that. Mm -hmm. So- even in that instance, right? Like it's not safe to go down this road. Of course it's not safe because the most familiar thing that you've been doing, which is living in accordance with your discount itself, you stayed alive, why change? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So that absolutely makes sense. But again, reinforces the two problems, right? That, that you just identified. And then number three, if you were to sell your stuff for, and I'm going to use 5K because I'm assuming you charge less than 5K. So if you mm -hmm. were to sell your stuff for 5K, mm -hmm. would you know how to do it? I mean, you talk about the sales process. Or are you talking about where I would need to put myself in terms of my state to do that? Well, you tell me, like it could be one or the other or both. Uh, well, I, I don't, I don't know. This is the short answer in terms of I, you know, I have a strategy, I have a, you know, a marketing plan, or you know that sort of stuff. So, um, the the only thing that's coming up is that certainty within that transaction of being as comfortable with myself about my rate as I want my clients to feel. Because uh, if I don't, do you see what I mean? So say that again, what would you, I think I know what you mean, but I'd rather confirm it. So uh, explain what you mean. So if I'm not feeling comfortable in my rate, that will energetically transfer in my communication. So then if I'm not certain, then the clients definitely aren't going to be certain. And so then it, it makes it very hard for them make, to make a decision because they're probably thinking, maybe I should get a discount. <laughs> 100%. I, I do agree with you. Yeah. So... It was, it's a yes or no question, right? Like, 
do I know how to sell my stuff for 5k or whatever higher rate you want to choose? Yeah. Yeah. Do I know how to sell it for the higher rate? Mm, I think I know an element of what needs to change, but I guess I won't know. I know until I've done it successfully. Right. So we're getting back to Mm -hmm. the validation of the external. It's only when the external tells me that I have permission to do this, that I can actually do it. Mm -hmm. Right. But if you look at, because all of these things, ultimately, like you're familiar with the, the guy that ran the four minute mile, Roger Bannister, I think his name was. Yeah. Name's familiar. So anyway, the, the four minute mile was considered for the longest time to be humanly impossible to actually do. Mm -hmm. Nobody could do it. And then one day this guy, Roger Bannister goes and he runs the four minute mile. I was like, holy crap, how did he actually end up doing that? Obviously he believed that he could do it before he got the validation of running it, that he knew that he could do it. Mm -hmm. But what's more interesting isn't that he ran it was more interesting after he ran it, a bunch of other people ended up running four minute miles. Yes. Right. But the story before that was exactly the circle that you're looping through right now, which is, well, I don't know if I can do it until somebody shows me that I can do it. And then I will believe that I can do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. So going back to the question, do I know how to sell for $5,000? To me, it's obviously a no, because, you know, even after asking you twice, it was like never a clear answer, right? It was Mm -hmm. kind of where we're incrementally getting there, Mm -hmm. right? So does that part make sense? Yes, I'm with you. Okay. So basically, you now have kind of the outline of, well, my identity is discounted, okay? Mm -hmm. It, It seeps into how I make decisions and how I live my business essentially and even in terms of skill set I'm 100% confident that I can sell at the level that's going to allow me the lifestyle that I want so does that like how does that resonate with you yeah yeah I'm with you okay and when you hear that reflected back to you what's kind of the internal feeling disappointment oh my god I'm so disappointed with myself that's not good because it's just gonna put me back in that loop but (laughs) yeah you know it's a that whole um you know not appreciating myself as a human being does it make sense not this achievement or that achievement or anything, but just as a human being of equal value to every other human being on the planet, it's, you know, that's, that's, yeah, that's the disappointment. It's like, oh yeah. Right. But even if you backtrack on that, Mm -hmm. the disappointment is that I am not equal to other human beings. That I'm not viewing myself as equal. Correct. So I'm not viewing myself equal to other human beings. Yeah. Right. So where is your source of power and validation in that statement? Right. Absent. The comparison was to other human beings. Oh, external again. Right. I have now come to the realization that my current worth is lower than my perceived worth of other human beings. And that is why I'm disappointed. Gee, I wish I could just be equal to other human beings. Mm -hmm. But obviously you didn't say that, but that's kind of what Mm -hmm. I'm trying to illuminate, like where your brain is defaulting to. It is so rooted in patterns right now Mm -hmm. in these discounting patterns, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even right now with three clear problems standing in front of me, it goes into and indulges in this loop of discounting myself so I can drive myself further into this doom loop and reinforce that inherent self, like self unworthiness, right? And I'm not saying these things to put you down, but more just to illustrate 
-hmm. there was an opportunity to say, okay, I understand my problems. How do I solve them? What do you think I should do? I know what I should do, mm -hmm. but where did your brain go? It went into just deeper reinforcing and digging you into that hole. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and this is, uh, uh, again, I, I kind of know you can take it. So I'm being like very direct. So, you know, yes. just know that this yes. is coming from love. I'm not like <laughs> here to hate on you for, <laughs> an, for a podcast, but it, it just it more yeah. comes down to this is what is often overlooked where we will chase the business things. We will chase, well, it's like, hey, I have a marketing and sales strategy, et cetera. You might, but it's always going to work to the level of your self-identity, which right now is not only rooted low, Mm -hmm. but your reliability to actually get it higher mm -hmm. has so many blind spots that, that it's very hard to lift mm -hmm. up without that mirror. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't also give you clarity on how well do you actually know the business side of things, because you're always going to confuse the math with the drama. And what I mean is mm -hmm. if I go and I try and sell something for 5k tomorrow, it doesn't work. If you're going to get caught up in the drama of the discount itself, mm -hmm. you're not going to look at the like actual mechanics and logistics of, oh, maybe I just didn't say this here, or I should have framed this this way or whatever, like logistically mm -hmm. I can improve on next time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So yes. that is kind of the other offshoot thing there. So does that overall like make sense? Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Okay. So I know that was kind of like, we kind of dove right into the issues right off the bat. And, and like, I think they're abundantly clear. And obviously I don't want to just kind of hammer them home. And obviously there's only so much we can do in, in a container like this, but like, does that feel complete for you? Or is there still something that that's left outstanding? Uh, no, I think that, you know, that there is, I love the way you, like you said, you, you could reflect it back and I can see really clearly now about that. And the resistance here is just putting my hand up and saying, no, I don't, I don't have the answers. I, I don't have the answers to that question because yes, I have a sales process. Is it tested? Do I reflect on it? Never from the perspective of, oh, I should have tweaked that sentence or said that would be us. Never as harsh. I, I would have done that. But mostly he would have gone back into, oh, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have tried to charge that. I'll give the next person a discount. Right. So right now you actually don't even know what's wrong in the business side of things because it's so muddled and distorted. I think it would, it would be hard for me to hold myself in the position of just like, well, let's just replay that whole conversation. What, what, da, 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 da. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I do because I do that in supervision and I do that, but it, it's not, it's definitely still coming from that discounted self. That person is speaking and looking at that data yeah. rather yeah. than, you know, me. I'm perfectly okay. Let's look at the data. Correct. And the other subtle distinction I would make that is like you said, okay, I do do that in supervision or, or however you, you worded it. and. Yeah. I'm assuming that's like, okay, if I have like a client session, I'll review it, see what I could have done better, like that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. That part you do do and can look at objectively because mm -hmm. that part has nothing to do with your self-worth. Somebody already said, yes, I accept you. I want to work with you. Now you're given this free clean slate to actually do your gift. So you can look at that objectively. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, when it comes to doing that on the business side of things and the sales like right now, you're at a wall, right? That there's too much baggage going into it to do that objectively. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I will use I will use my supervision to talk about sales calls that have you know how they've gone, and even if people haven't bought, so I will use that to reflect. But equally, I think um, you still what you're saying is valid. That yeah. There is still too much of the other chatter going on to be able to look at it objectively. Yeah. That makes sense. But again, awareness is always the first step. So I'm, I'm glad to see that that's in place. So again, anything that's left outstanding for you at this point? No, that, that, that's okay. I think I can let that permeate. Okay, fair enough. Well, 
uh, thank you very much for you know your courage and vulnerability to to do something like this in in this kind of public setting. So I'm gonna leave the floor to you to just tell everybody you know where they can find you, who's the best person to find you, and uh, you know we'll close it off with that. Oh, that is fantastic. It's been an absolute pleasure, Jessica. I really appreciate it. You can find me on Instagram at Viv Allen Coaching or my website's vivallen.com. Uh, I'm also on Instagram, uh, LinkedIn and Facebook at Viv Allen Coaching. Just find vivallen.com. Awesome. We'll put all of that in the show notes. So thank you very much for uh, coming on. It was definitely a pleasure. And oh, uh, for everybody else that's uh, listening, you know, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you very much. Cheers.